So my service call today uh, is fixing this Sonnen battery. Um, everything looks fine now, but I got a call into tech support and I have become very familiar with this guy's house and the drive down here, the hour and a half long route down here. Um, you know, he's got my cell phone number uh, and it's kind of unfortunate. So I'm gonna give you guys a, a look inside here and then kind of go over what we've been having for issues with these things and um, why we're no longer installing them. So this unit, uh, has been glitching since we installed it. Um, there have been a number of different uh, problems that we've had here. Um, but you know, the, the, the biggest issue is it just doesn't keep running. And uh, if you guys have seen some of my other videos, I cannot stand it when things don't keep running. Um, <laughs> so here's kind of a look inside. You can see the uh, grid power comes in right there. You got micro grid power out. Um, there's a main breaker there. Uh, you get all your terminal blocks, uh, CTs to measure in and out power. There's a generator hooked up in this thing as well. Well, that got blurry, didn't it? Um, transfer switch, DC breaker with a bleed uh, resistor in there to make sure it doesn't blow up when you turn it on. And then here are the batteries. And there's more down there. So this is uh, this is a 16 kilowatt hour battery. It's got an 8kW Outback Radian inverter. Um, and on paper, this thing is awesome. Uh, you know, I was really excited when they came out with them and I, you know, was, was like, this is gonna be an amazing product. But the, uh, the reality of it was is that they basically took a whole bunch of different parts from different manufacturers um, and they put them all together and tried to make them talk together. But they used their own software um, and their own control board hardware for that. Um, then they used an AXS port, um, which you can see kind of right here. That's an Outback product. Uh, to make the radiant inverter talk to everything else. Um, and so, so there's, there's no issue with all of the individual products that they installed inside of this. Um, the issue is with their firmware, their software, their hardware, just anything they made um, is constantly glitching. They're constantly updating it. Every time they do, the thing shuts your house down pretty reliably, even though they say it's not supposed to and has other kinds of issues after that. Um, so, uh, we're actually, as I'm filming this video, I'm waiting for tech support to call me back. Um, <laughs> so here we go. So the biggest issue, uh, first and foremost is a lack of tech support. Um, you cannot get a hold of them in a timely manner. Uh, you call them, you have to wait on hold for 10 to 20 minutes to get their answering service, who then takes a message and sends it to them. And then they'll call you back as soon as they can, which in my case, uh, I hope is pretty soon because I'm waiting here until they call me back. I've also put in an email to the uh, head of tech support, um, who I'm in contact with. Uh, I don't have his direct phone number though, so that's unfortunate, but I put in an email to him saying, Hey, listen, I'm here waiting for you people to call me back. Um, and who knows how long it will be. Secondly, and, uh, it's kind of concerning actually, uh, is their round trip efficiency is nowhere near. They say it is in the spec sheet. Um, we had another customer, uh, who had this same unit, kind of an early, uh, eco gen two, I think it was, um, and we uh, crunched the numbers on it. Um, and the guy who did that is probably watching this video. Uh, <laughs> and thank you for that. Uh, we crunched the numbers on it. And uh, we found out that it, it was, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but it was, it was pretty terrible. Um, and so he presented all these to Sonata. And they ended up sending us another two kilowatt hour module to make up the difference. 
Um, these batteries uh, are part of a program with Green Mountain Power where they discharge them at certain times of the day. And in doing that, they, they also give you a good size credit on your bill. Um, but what this one guy was seeing was that the amount discharged and the amount charged didn't line up. And that guy was an engineer and he said, hey, look, these are my findings. Um, you know, I, I want you to corroborate them. And, um, you know, this isn't what they said it was going to be. So we ended up getting a free battery out of them uh, to uh, to add to the capacity because the round trip efficiency wasn't uh, didn't didn't meet the, the spec sheet. Um, so that's uh, one more thing. So next we have the, uh, the the firmware updates or software updates or whatever you want to call them. Uh, they update these things constantly. Um, and when they first came out, they said, yeah, you can use them off grid. You can use them, you know, in an off grid AC coupled, uh, you know, house. Um, and so I've done two of those now. One of them still running by some magic. Um, but the other one, the guy got fed up with it and we ended up having to take it out and replace it with something else. Um, but every time they update the firmware, something goes wrong. It's like they don't vet the updates or, or what, but the thing shuts down or gets, you know, this, this little ring right here turns red and starts angrily flashing at you. And, uh, we call it the red circle of death. Um, and so this guy was, he was done with it because his power would just shut off randomly, you know, once a month or more. Um, and he, he was just fed up with constantly losing power, you know, and he paid a good amount of money for the product too. And, you know, these things are, they're super expensive, um, you know, and with all battery systems, they're not cheap, but you know, for that price, you better get what you're, you get your, get your money's worth, you know? Um, so so one of the glitches that this thing uh, has is um, as part of this uh, utility program uh, to uh, send power back to the grid when it's needed, uh, they, they work with a company called Virtual Peaker, um, where it basically sends commands to all of these different batteries. And this one, for some reason, keeps on sending out a signal um to virtual peaker and then they respond by putting it into uh manual mode um and in doing so it does not charge or discharge from the grid anymore um it just slowly discharges because it's consuming its own power uh slowly discharges down to zero um so uh they they still haven't been able to resolve that we've been going back and forth for months now about this um and uh you know, it's just kind of every couple weeks, uh, this thing sends out a signal and turn switches over to manual mode and I have to call them, um, and have them reset it. So that's, uh, a great use of my time and I'm very happy to call them every couple weeks to, to do this. Uh, that is if I pay attention to it, if I miss it, then the homeowner calls me and says my house is dead. Another problem we've been having with these is they are AC coupled. We have uh, two sun power, uh, basically SMA inverters um, that are AC coupled with this thing. And one of the glitches was the PVCTs, which are up in this box here. Don't mind the blue smurf tube. I didn't do the install um, up in the box here. One of them just got flipped uh, in the computer. Um, but not in real life, obviously, because nobody would have gone in there to flip it. Um, so then it was reading the, uh, production wrong and then it wasn't charging when it needed to. Um, and it's just like one more, one more thing that, that goes wrong. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants on this video. I didn't really write anything down. Um, <laughs> but, uh, the, the next thing we got going on here is, uh, the ability to AC couple. Um, they have, uh, had an issue with end phase microinverters. Um, you know, when, when the micros are producing power, when you're running off grid, there's a pretty bad flickering that occurs. Um, you know, and we're, we're on grid right now, so you, you can't see any flickering, but, um, also, well, there's sun power stuff. So SMA has been good. Um, but with end phase microinverters, uh, they, they just, they don't. AC couple well with these things, 
Um, I think it has something to do with the fact that there's no neutral on the micros, so it's just straight 240 volt. Um, but that was one thing that we noticed with the off-grid system. We had originally installed that with uh, Enphase Micros. We ended up removing that and switching over to Solar Edge, um, which you know we typically wouldn't do, but that did seem to clear it up. Um, you know, somehow I'm not exactly sure how. Um, another thing to do with that would be you know install like a uh, a auto transformer or something to uh, to help build that neutral up. Um, you know, coming from the, um, from the micros. So, um, AC coupleability, uh, you know, they, they, they do a good job with frequency shifting. Um, you know, they get up to 95% and then frequency shift down, um, you know, frequency shift up, sorry, uh, to, to 62 Hertz, 65 Hertz. Um, and then when the, the battery state of charge goes down to 90, they, they run right back uh, down to 60 hertz. So when we originally installed these things, um, they were having issues with neutral loops. So um, where a neutral was attached to ground somewhere other than right here, um, it would throw an error. And I don't know of any other battery system that does that. Um, obviously, you know, you wanna separate your grounds and neutrals, but um, you know, it happens in a house where they might be connected somewhere and this thing wasn't operating because of that. Um, the other problem was they, um, they have the, all these little terminal blocks back there. Um, and they had a, there's a couple of them that were, uh, what were they? 12 volt aux output. Um, and then there were a couple or at least one that was just a, um, uh, just a, a dry contact. Um, those were just mislabeled, um, just, just not labeled right. And so, um, blew, blew a board up on one of them, uh, when we installed this thing. Um, so anyway, I, I'm running out of things to, uh, complain about here. Um, <laughs> that's probably close to 10. We'll call it good. Um, but, uh, yeah. So bottom line is don't buy a Sonnen. Don't just, there, there are so many other systems out there. Um, this one has been just absolutely terrible. Um, and you know, it's, there's no good reason for it. Um, you know, I know they got bought out by Shell a while back and, and they've kind of gone downhill since then, but it didn't start on a very high hill. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and, uh, buy something different. And just to follow up here, I uh, just got off the phone with Sonnen and they said, oh, looks like everything's fine. We don't know why it turned itself off. Um, you know, uh, they, they couldn't give me an answer. And uh, it, it <laughs> they're like, we'll, we'll look into it. Um, but, you know, obviously, so it's got this breaker here um, right there. That's 200 amp. And, uh, and it has a shunt trip as well. So, um, it can be turned off by command, um, or it could trip and they don't know why it did. So, um, I had to come here to turn it back on because the homeowner didn't want to, because he didn't know what was going to happen. And rightfully so we've had it shut itself off and kill power to the house. And, um, you know, <laughs> there was, there was no way to turn it back on other than to start pulling little wires out of the control box here. Um, so, you know, the, the last time you had a power outage and this thing failed to turn on um, because of one of the glitches, uh, you know, he, he texted me the next morning out of being after being without power for 12 hours and uh, was like, hey, you know, is, is this thing going to turn back on or what? And uh, the grid power was on, but this never turned back on. So um, there we are.